So I wanted to come on and one thing that I have um, have a lot of questions around over on my, in my classes and I've been getting um, a couple of people asking me after the classes as well is all around their posture so inadvertently they're asking something else but actually it's all got to do with posture and um, the you wouldn't necessarily think it's that important uh, during your pregnancy but it's actually hugely important during your pregnancy um, um, for loads of different reasons but um, I'm going to go through a few, few different reasons now and then we'll also go through a couple of reasons around why it um, can make a huge difference for your birth and the length of your labour and the length of your birth as well um, which we'll go through in a moment and then also afterwards I'll just briefly touch on the importance of your posture after you've had a baby. So really when you're pregnant there are two main issues around the importance of um, of posture and one has got to do with your, just your physical body, your well-being and how comfortable you are throughout your pregnancy and then the second one as I mentioned earlier is around your birth. Okay so if you just talk about the, the first one around your, your physical comfort of your body um, very often when you're pregnant what tends to happen is you have two different tilts of your body so you have one that's called a lordotic tilt or lordosis in the lower back which is where your lower back sways so you have that classic kind of prego stance where you're sticking your belly out and your backside in the other direction so i'm trying to do it so if your lower back is normally has a slight curve but when you're pregnant it's like an over exaggerated curve so bump comes out here that's the first type of uh, change in your posture and then the second type is called a kyphosis, which is basically where you're slightly rounding the shoulders. So basically what happens is that you, these muscles here tends to shorten. The boobs tend to get heavier as your pregnancy progresses. You start to kind of slump forward and then you start to get pain in your upper back. So you've got pain in your upper back and you've got pain in your lower back just simply because of those two um, issues that are happening um, muscular so you the lordosis and the kyphosis so they can actually lead to an awful lot of pain in your body so as I said you can have the lower back pain the upper back pain then um, in anybody I'm laughing to myself because anyone who comes to a lot of my yoga classes the prenatal ones we have some people talking about the, the um, random rib pain <laughs> so people get pain in their ribs and they just can't get rid of it so they'll get a little bit of relief during classes or during some different types of stretching exercises that we do but a lot of the time it's really challenging to try and get rid of rib pain um, and also pelvic pain so a lot of those will actually be um, they can be helped from your posture so an awful lot of pain can be helped from your posture remember if you are there say hello so I can so I can uh, see who's online and I'll see if you have any little like buttons or, or comments and um, this is my first one I'm doing so uh, I can see how we're going and say hello and um, so the uh, yeah so your posture can basically help an awful lot of pain so um, if you have really good posture you can prevent a lot of this pain so I just want to really briefly touch on when people say the core and the importance of the core what your core actually is is your whole like your canister of your body so you have the pelvic floor at the bottom you have your diaphragm so if I just stand up you basically you have your pelvic floor down below your diaphragm up here and then you have the whole front of your body and you have the whole back of your body so that whole canister is my very noisy chair is your core okay so it's not just your your tummy muscles or your deep tummy muscles so you want to make sure that all of those different parts of the body are acting together and really strongly and they're they're basically acting as one so your pelvic floor and your diaphragm are working perfectly when you're breathing your ribs are moving out as you inhale your diaphragm is moving um is moving out and the pelvic floor is um uh, is moving down so it's all basically it's all working together perfectly as you inhale and as you exhale and your posture can actually affect that um, so they're the different parts of the, the canister um, and then also if that whole core function isn't working properly this can also lead to pain so you want to make sure that you are sitting 
properly and that you're sitting comfortably um, all the time during your pregnancy because that will just simply sitting properly will act and standing properly and holding yourself properly will actually prevent an awful lot of um, pain through the body. So back pain, pelvic, hip, etc. as we were talking about earlier. So and then aesthetically, once you've had your baby, you want to also um, if things like flatter tummies are important to you um, having a really good posture and having that core function working properly and having your core muscles working properly so your transverse abdominus muscles that I'm always banging on about in the classes so those TA your TA muscle your deepest level which is like a big corset that wraps around your body all of those working properly will not just prevent pain in your pregnancy but will also help you recover faster and will help you um, get your your tummy back a little bit <laughs> um, Hello Jenny, I think I see you popping on. I have my computer on behind me as well. Uh, so if, if I can see a few questions coming up. So um, just a, just a couple of tips for how you present, how you prevent the pain and look after your posture during the day is just noticing um, everyday living. So how you're sitting, how you're standing, how you're breathing, how you're lifting, whether it's a baby, a toddler, shopping anything off the floor and um, how you're lifting things uh, having a good posture whether you're just in ter terms of moving driving basically everything just standing being aware of your posture so what do i mean by uh, by good posture so remembering what we said at the start you have these two tilts going on in your body when you're pregnant this little dotted tilt of the belly sticking out and you've got overarching into the low back and then the rounding of the shoulders like this so just being aware of standing up nice and tall so that this TA, this transverse abdominus muscle, you, I want you to even just think about drawing in the tummy really gently and that'll feel like you're slightly giving baby a little hug. So you're drawing baby towards you slightly in and up um, and that will, will prevent and help prevent that overarching in the lower back. And then just with the shoulders, just thinking about bringing your shoulders down and backwards. So you're, you're straightening out, helping to straighten out these muscles here at the front. And simply just by being aware, just even notice during the day if you're standing and just think, how am I standing? <laughs> am I sticking my belly out? You know the way normally when you're not pregnant, you're always kind of slightly hugging in your belly a bit. Um, well, I do. And most, most women do, particularly if you've had a baby before. You're slightly drawing in your tummy. Um, but when you're pregnant, you kind of just let it all hang out and it's a bit, <laughs> and you just let your posture in the belly hang. But that's actually really bad um, for your, uh, hi Mary, <laughs> that's actually really bad for your, um, your back as well. So you want to just keep thinking about drawing in the tummy muscles a little bit. So that will help the low back and then uh, shoulders down and bring the um, the shoulders away from the ears. So that's another thing. Then just still thinking about when you're pregnant, are you balancing your weight on two feet? I know this sounds completely ridiculous, but if you are standing slightly, most of us stand slightly our space. So we might have standing on two feet, but you're slightly shifting to one side and then that kind of tilts the hip and the pelvis. So that can lead, if you're doing that all the time, every day, for even if for a few minutes every day, that can have that slight tilt in the pelvis, which can then lead to prolonged back pain, actually. So really simple things like that. So standing properly, when you're standing up straight, just standing with the weight on separately on, 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 um, on each foot. Uh, then your footwear. So I know when I was, I can't wear heels anymore anyway, um, but when you're wearing a pair of quite high heels you're slightly shifting your body forward which will also not help with the two the tilts going on in the body that we spoke about earlier so um if you can have footwear that is a lot of people think oh we'll just wear flats when you're pregnant that's actually dreadful to wear flats so like flip-flops and really those real flat shoes so what you actually want when you're pregnant is a little bit of a heel and you want support around the whole arch in the center of your foot. Um, so that's really important. That can also help um, massively in preventing pain, particularly back and the pelvis that we were talking about earlier. And then just things like if you do have other children or toddlers and you're lifting them an awful lot, 
um, think about trying to swap them. Um, if they're on one hip, it'll feel like you're writing with your opposite hand. But if you're standing on, if you normally pick them up and hold them on your left hip, try and hold them on your right hip or even try and minimise the amount of holding that you can do which I know is quite hard if you've got a baby already and you're pregnant or a toddler. Um, but just be really aware of it. So when you're going down to lift them, bend your knees, have your back straight um, and all that kind of stuff. So just be, be aware of that. And then, so that's a few tips for standing. When you're sitting, um, sitting can, excuse me, have complications for the positioning of your baby, um, which I'll talk about in a second. But when you're sitting, do you cross your legs? I am a devil for this. I always cross my legs. Um, and I also, a lot of the time, will walk like this. And I also had some pelvic pain in my on my second baby. So I, I was really aware of my posture during my um my second my second baby. So yeah, so when you're sitting down, um try and make sure that your, your legs aren't crossed. So it's just it's habitual habitual things that we do like that that can all lead to a little bit of pain in the body. Um, so yeah, so the sitting, I just have a few notes written down here, so um, I have a tendency for my mind to wander. Uh, so are, when you're sitting down also, are your hips higher than your knees? So at the end of the day, what most people do, particularly when you're knackered and you're pregnant and you've been out all day or you're busy or whatever, normally what people will do is they like slouch back into their couch or back into your chair and you're, and you're a bit pooped. That's really not helpful for you, your body or your baby's position. Um, so if you can think about having your hips slightly, just look at the way you're sitting. So having your hips sitting slightly higher than your knees with your feet flat on the floor. Um, but this is particularly as you go in through the, the second half of your pregnancy, which will have a, a really big impact on just on pain on the body. Um, and just try and make sure that your back is quite straight and think about the the hips or the um, the ribs. So you want to try and lift the rib cage up, so it's not squashing downwards on the baby, and therefore not making you very comfortable either. Because baby will always be comfortable <laughs> and will make themselves comfortable. So if you're sitting up nice and straight, hips higher than your knees, and actually a really good way of doing this is to sit in a birthing ball, like an exercise ball. Um, if you don't have one of these, I'd really recommend you, you getting a birthing ball, generally at least um, 65 centimetre one. And if you're particularly tall or just kind of taller than, I don't know, five foot seven ish, um, having a, a bigger ball, maybe around 70, 75 centimetre mark. Just make sure it's pumped up properly. And that is amazing. It's your best friend during your labour, um, but also just for to help positioning during your pregnancy as well. So that's standing, sitting tips, um, then lying down. So when you're lying down, even if you're fairly early on in your pregnancy, when you're lying on, on your side, try and have a pillow in between your knees, um, one under your bump, a big bump or a little bump, and one around your lower back. So basically when you have all those different parts of the body supported, your pelvis is in alignment and it doesn't have to go different or you know it doesn't have to go in a, in a, in a strange position and um, so really really useful from quite early on is make and plus you'll probably be a lot more comfortable at night for sleeping and um, and you know if your doctor tells you never to lie on your back for a specific health um, or a complication that you may have in pregnancy you can actually lie on your back as long as you don't feel really dizzy or lightheaded or so basically for around 20% of women, they will have a drop in um, blood pressure um, because when you're lying on your back, and particularly when the baby gets much bigger, it's pressing down onto the, it can press down onto the vena cava, which is the large vein that the, has the, the blood that runs up from the rest of the body, from the, the bottom of the body and up and um, back into the heart. So um, you want to just make sure that uh, it's, and this is only 20% of people so some people can lie on their back when they're 40 weeks pregnant and they're grand um, but for others it's just it's you want to make sure that you're either not if you need to lie on your back if you want to lie on your back for a few moments and um, that you feel fine and baby doesn't all of a sudden give you a dig or you kind of feel really lightheaded if you do just roll onto your side and, and come up but if you want to lie on your back and you get comfortable just put lots of pillows and just elevate your 
upper body a little bit. So your your head, your your back, and the upper back and the neck. Um, a couple of other tips then for being comfortable for your pregnancy, for helping you um, be comfortable and preventing pain in terms of posture, is your handbag. <laughs> so. I used to, when I was, um, years ago, when I was like working full time in a corporate job, I used to have a massive handbag, which, you know, most of us do. Um, and I'd always wear it on my left hand side and I'd always be down like this and carry my big massive handbag. That is really bad for your posture, for your back. So I know, again, it'll feel like you are writing with the wrong hand, but swap over your your bag try and obviously make it as light as possible and then maybe move to a nice sensible backpack and um, particularly if you're having issues uh with your um with your with your back uh i'm just making sure here i still have oh yeah okay let's <laughs> make sure i'm still uh live so if you do have questions remember just to to pop them in and i can um I can ask as we go. I think somebody shared that on Mum and Baby. Thank you very much for doing that. Uh, so yeah, so then uh, the other tip would be keep your legs together. <laughs> so basically when you're in bed and you want to move, try and keep your knees together. And it, I know, you know, if you're like eight weeks pregnant and you're, you, you know, you don't need to do that that early but when you're starting to get physically the, the bump is starting to get quite big you'll just what I'm trying to all do here is trying to help you prevent pain from developing and um, so keeping the knees together getting in and out of the car and um, try and make sure when you're sitting in the car that you're also having your hips higher than your knees which is really hard unless you have some supported cushioning or something in your car so if you are particularly if you're towards the end of your pregnancy and if you drive a lot, you know, to or from work or whatever, um, really think about getting your seat more comfortable. So um, uh, all those things we were talking about, having the hips up nice and high, the back is straight. Because normally when you're driving, you're kind of down like this. So it's exactly the type of positions that we don't want. And you'll feel like crap um, if you're in the car for anything more than about 20 minutes. I remember I used to, so I, I uh, definitely moved I moved around when I was uh, helped my my um posture in my car when I was pregnant. Um, what else said about the toddler? If you can try and minimize lifting or swap sides, um, and then I hear yoga is very good. So <laughs> you want to try and move your body, and also stretch it out. So, um, things like if you're if you're in yoga, it's it's. You can go to a yoga class. If you can't get to yoga class, I have online um, packages that I'll put the link in down below after this. Um, so you can practice yoga at any time. You can just log in, practice your sessions. There are five different sequences that you can do prenatally um, and mix them all up or do one big long session together. But in total, I think it's about 80 minutes or so of um, my beautiful face doing yoga that's recorded. You can log in and do it when, whenever you want. But Yoga is amazing because um, in the classes, if you go to somebody who's specialised in prenatal, your the sequences, so the, the actual physical positions and exercises that you're going to be doing is going to be specifically treating those issues that we talked at the very start. So things like the lordotic tilt, so the overarching in the lower back, the shoulders rounding, the pelvic floor weakening, the weak tummy muscles because you're letting everything hang out. So um, bringing the transverse abdominus nice and strong so you feel like you're hugging your baby you're slightly bringing the, the tummy muscles in they're all really important um, and yeah it'll also the yoga will also be brilliant for not just stretching out the body but also um, like lengthening the specific muscles and um, so even the pelvic floor I know obviously you want to have a there's a you know, strong pelvic floor with you, your Kegel exercises, your lifting and releasing. That is really important, but it's only one part of the puzzle. So you want to be able to have a pelvic floor that is also has the ability to relax. So it's a toned muscle as opposed to a um, strong muscle. So you want it to be strong, but toned. So it has the ability to relax and open. Um, okay, so there were a few things, just to recap, because there was quite a lot of stuff um, that I went on. So 
Posture, really important for preventing pain or minimizing any pain that you have. So the lordotic tilt in the low back, the shoulders rounding in particular. So things like drawing in through the tummy, sitting up nice and tall, bringing the shoulders down, the chest is slightly forward, but you're not like pressing your chest forward. You're just sitting up tall, thinking about the rib cage, lifting it up off the, the baby as the baby grows. Um, you want to think about your everyday situation. So your how you stand, how you get in and out of bed, how you're sitting in your car, how you're sitting at home when you're um, relaxing in the couch, are your hips up higher? I mean, this does not be every second of the day, but particularly if you're starting to get into um, the latter stage, certainly the second half of your pregnancy anyway, these are just really good tips to keep you all going. Um, nice and healthy, which is what I want for all of you pregnant ladies. Okay, and then let's take a drink of water. I'm roasting here, I'm in my study and I have the lights on with the windows closed, so even though it is Baltic outside, this um, room gets quite warm. Okay, so remember um, to say hello, um, Hi Tracy, I think you just come online. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Um, so say hello, ask any little questions in the comments box there, don't be shy. You can ask them now or if you're not watching this live, um, just make sure to ask them afterwards and I'll come back on and type them in. So the second part um, of the importance of posture in your pregnancy is your birth. So the thing that everyone focuses on when they're pregnant and uh, nobody really thinks about after they have the baby. But focusing on the birth, your posture can make such an enormous difference to the birth that you have. So uh, certainly a few years ago before I got into any of this stuff, I never would have thought that. But your posture is so important, not just for all the other things that we've just gone through in the past, um, whenever it was, 20 minutes, but your posture for your birth is so important. So one of the, the main reason is to get the baby into a good, an optimal positioning, so optimal fetal positioning. So your baby will want to, your baby knows the easiest way to get out um, for, uh, if, they're, if they're going to come out vaginally, um, they will automatically get into the best position. Um, so there will be some reasons why they mightn't be able to get into that position for, but most of the time, if you can get your baby into a really good birthing position, it will give you a faster labour and a more straightforward labour and birth. So how do you get your baby into a good position? It is all, so much of it has got to do with your posture and practising um, yoga or Pilates so with somebody who is um, trained so they know what they're doing. It's not just a random yoga or Pilates class and you happen to be pregnant in it. So what you want is you want the baby's chin to be tucked and you want their smallest part of their head facing straight down. So um, and then so for a lot of the time if they're like they're back to back so um their spine is facing your spine you're most of the time not all the time but a lot of the time you'll have a more challenging lengthy labor with an awful lot of pain in your back that doesn't seem to reduce um you know when you normally when you have you have a contraction and then you relax and you, you have no discomfort at all um, but then if you have back to back, if baby's not lying in a good position, you're just not giving yourself, uh, you're not doing yourself any favours. So how could you get baby into a good position? So all during your pregnancy, particularly in the last trimester, you want to be thinking about upright, forward leaning positions. So say hello if you've got questions. I can see there are a few people um, coming on. Hello. Um, so if you are in forward leaning positions. So these can be, you don't have to, if you can, if, well, if you're used to doing a forward leaning inversion, if you can try and do that for a short period of time every day. And what I mean by that is a pose like downward facing dog. So if you've done yoga, down dog is brilliant. It's so good at getting baby into a good position. It gently stretches through the all the muscles and the ligaments around through the, the pelvis, creating more space through the pelvis. Um, and it also encourages them to get into that good position um, 
so to get out easily through the birth canal. Um, so forward leaning daily inversion if you're used to it. And inversion is also, it's like a supported child's pose really. But also think about coming onto the hands and the knees so important so if you did have that back pain that back labor um during your labor that back to back where you have had that incessant pain so they're basically looking straight out at you um or straight out at the world you will live on your hands and knees in your labor um, and you'll want your birthing partner or midwife or whoever's there with you to press down on the lower back press into the hips and give you an awful lot of comfort that way and have heat on your lower back so during your pregnancy, particularly towards the end of your pregnancy, get into downward dog, support a child's pose, child's pose with your bum up in the air. That's also good too. Um, lots of hands and knees positions. Cat cow. Cat cow is really nice where you're basically just rounding the back and um, uh, very, very basic, but really nice for reducing back pain, getting baby into a good birthing position um, and uh, bring flexibility, fluidity into the spine, taking weight off the spine. It's so good. Um, really, really nice. When you're on your hands and knees, just make sure that you're not letting the belly sag down. So do you remember at the start, we were talking about this TA, the transverse abdominus muscle, feel like you're just drawing your baby in towards you. Um, and then also tips for the, the kind of the second half of your pregnancy is when you are sitting, Sit the way we were talking about at the earlier part of the video, about the hips nice and high. Have a look at your belly button. <laughs> so you want, a really simple way of looking at it, is you want your belly button pointing straight and slightly down. So if you had like a torch stuck in your belly button, it would be slightly pointing towards the floor. So that's the, I'm automatically doing that now with my, with my own um, hips. So you want yourself just slightly pointing um, downwards towards the floor. Squatting positions are also brilliant. Really, really good to try and sit in. in. You can support a squat by um, having your back up against the wall or having your back up against an uh, exercise or birthing ball against the wall and slowly start to try and lower down into a full squat. And um, that's an also a really good one to um, get baby into a brilliant position as well. And then um, another reason why I love the TA, the transverse abdominus muscle, the deepest core muscle that you have. So it um, helps with your posture. It uh, helps um, if it's nice and strong. You are also helping prevent back pain, pelvic pain, rib pain, just helping the whole core function work nicely together. But also it's involved in pushing your baby out. So physically helping to push the baby out. So it's a hugely important muscle um, that uh, I focus on an awful lot through the uh, through the yoga that I teach. Um, OK, so you've been pregnant and then you have your baby. So an awful lot of once you've had your baby, an awful lot of what I was talking about pregnancy actually still stands for when you've had your baby. So for anyone who's had a baby ever, you will notice that you go back to your rounded shoulders, so your kyphosis, this shortening of the, the muscles here. So if you are breastfeeding, your boobs are normally ginormous. So that's also helping to draw the shoulders forward and helping to give you lovely back pain in the upper back. Um, so you want to think about healing your body. So this isn't about losing weight or I'm not in that, that space at all here. I'm talking about healing your body. The, the most important thing from the inside out so that your muscles are strong, so that you can be nice and strong and um, strong mama. So again, you're going to have this kyphosis, this forward tilt. So what do you do? You bring your shoulders down, you stand up nice and tall. The lordosis, that overarching in the lower back might also still be around draw in the tummy so by even from the day you give birth or the day after you give birth right up until donkey's ears later um you want to think about proper breathing exercises with your pelvic floor exercises so you're you, you can simply just remind yourself to shoulder down nice and tall posture uh, lifting your chest forward and standing nice and tall but down below if you have any issues with incontinence, even sneezing and you leak a bit of wee, anything like that, that is not normal. It is common, very common, but it's not normal. So, you know, instead of just, you know, wearing incontinence pads or just kind of putting up with it, um, 
you don't have to. So it's so important. I'm not a physiotherapist, but I would highly recommend that if you've any form of perineal trauma, leaking, anything at all, um, painful sex afterwards, uh, whenever you decide to do that, um, anything at all that's going wrong down below, make sure you go and see a women's health physiotherapist because there is so much that can be done not surgery. I mean, surgery is obviously there is an option for more severe trauma, um, but really simple exercises like in yoga. I incorporate an awful lot of them into a lot of my postnatal classes. So um, please do go and see a physiotherapist who specialises in women's health. From my, just going back there, from um, day one, day two, you should be focused on your pelvic floor exercises as well as correct breathing. So remember I was talking earlier about your core, your canister, um, so diaphragm, diaphragm, pelvic floor, all the muscles at the front of the body, all the muscles at the back of the body, that has to be working properly and together. If that's not working properly and together, you will have some pain, whether it's pelvic pain, um, weakening through the pelvic floor, um, which can happen whether you've had cesarean or, or a vaginal delivery, um, weak tummy muscles, pain in your back, all of these things can really help through correct posture, good posture, and just taking a little bit more care of yourself and doing pelvic floor exercises with correct breathing. From, as I said, the first day, if you focus on the, I do an awful lot on like a three part breath. So as you breathe in through the nose, the belly moves out, the rib cage moves out and the top of the chest moves up and then exhaling properly, everything moves back down. Inhaling big and properly, let the whole body expand. And as you exhale, you then lift the pelvic floor up and the tummy in and breathe out fully and then inhaling you'd relax everything exhale again draw everything in lift the pelvic floor up draw the tummy in if you just focused on that breathing properly for a few minutes every day just with your eyes closed um i'm not talking about 20 minutes i'm talking literally about three or four minutes here that will help heal pelvic floor um, uh, issues and also um, a gap, the, I don't know if um, you've heard of this, the, this gap between the tummy muscles, so the, the two, um, like your six pack muscles and the rectus abdominis at the front, <clears throat> there's a little linea alba, this little line in between these and then most people when you're pregnant, the stomach muscles because of the intrauterine pressure, there's a pressure coming forward, those muscles can tend to separate. Most women they'll eventually heal back together but for some women it's there's left this big gap which can lead to back pain, pelvic pain, um, incontinence, um, loads of issues around, around the pelvis. So would you believe correct breathing can help heal that which is incredible. So breathing properly just like I spoke about can help the pelvic floor and help that um, close together and the importance of your transverse abdominus muscles that we spoke about earlier um, that will help heal as well when you've got a nice strong muscle. When you're doing anything postnatally, anything like lifting or anything where you're exerting a little bit of pressure, draw in the tummy muscle first and then perform your exercise. And if you try and just keep reminding yourself to do that, um, it'll be really, really positive. So if you have that strong pelvic floor and the strong transverse abdominus muscles, um, you try and hold your baby in, um, in a supportive position. If you are feeding, whatever type of feeding you're doing, try and make sure that you're supported so um, that you have cushions underneath you. So, so many times, and I, I cringe, I always want to help my, my new mums, like they're carrying the big um, car seat which weighs a bloody ton, and um, they might be feeding just sitting on the floor or just sitting up, like, you know, try and really support yourself. If you are breastfeeding, have pillows or cushions or um, whatever type of feeding you're doing, you know, sit up against the wall that you're supported and that you're comfortable um, because you'll be doing a lot of it. Um, so, yeah, so any anything, all of those activities that you do as a new mum, um, if you do them properly, you will very much decrease the risk of your back pain, your hip pain, um, and then um, reduce the possibility of having postnatal incontinence as well, so, and a whole host of other issues. Um, so, as I said, if you are having any troubles postnatally, 
pain wise the back or pelvic floor incontinence please do, do go and see um, a physiotherapist do try and um, do some targeted exercises like simple breathing I also do a five week postnatal course online on Nurture Mamas um, so please do have a look at, at that as well it's very much around healing the body um, for five weeks and you can start that when you feel comfortable around the kind of the five or six week mark depending on your delivery um, and I think if there are any questions please do type them below I think that was pretty much all I had to talk about posture um, for pregnancy and postnatally uh, if you haven't liked the Facebook page please do um, give me a little like and share this video would be really appreciated I'm also on the nurturemamas.com there is on the home page there's a spot for you to um, type in your email address so basically every Monday I'll send out um, blogs or, or interviews with experts or um, videos that I've done or lots of different bits and bobs so every Monday you'll get um, something really useful from me uh, so please uh, do do sign up on the home page if you haven't um, uh, if you're if you're not part of the gang and uh, if you have any questions at all have a look at nurturemamas.com um, there I have the three different online courses there's two postnatal one is just pure yoga for prenatal one is a seven week um, prenatal yoga and birth preparation course and then I also do the five week postnatal nurturing um, yoga based uh, course. There's lots in the, the prenatal all around, like the breathing, the best positions to get into for labour and birth. Um, lots of five different yoga sequences that's all included in the seven week course. So thanks so much for your time. I'm going to finish up now. Um, please do comment afterwards or share and email me at helen at nurturemamas.com. So thank you all so much. I will see you all again soon. Bye.